Let's open up our sign up page. We need to start adding some form stuff into our form. Now remember, everything must go inside that colored area. That's our form, that's our wrapper for it. As a matter of fact, if we do click on it to select it, you will notice down here on properties, it says form one. Now that name is used by several things. I wanna do this. Let's go ahead and select that name first and let's call that, you gotta watch these names for spaces and stuff like that. So I'm gonna call a sign up form. I mean, you don't really have to change that name. You might have to remember what it is, but you don't have to change it. But it makes sense, it's a sign up form, why not? Now some of this other stuff we'll talk about later, don't worry about it yet. We need to add some text fields. Now text fields are unique in this respect. You can put anything in a text field. Letters, numbers, special characters. We're going to do, and we need, a name, an address, and a city, and a state, and a zip. Now that would be kind of a US way of looking at it, but name, address, city, state, and zip. Let's start by clicking back into our form. Remember you want to be in here and go in the upper left hand corner. Let me go ahead and collapse files and pull that down. In your insert panel, you do have a text field. So go ahead and click that button. What we have is an ID. Now that is the data name of the field. In years past, I did a lot of data programming. I used programs like COBOL, RPG, Fortran, C, C++. I knew about a dozen different basic languages. It's the name of the field that relates the data. So if this is a name field, the ideal name would be name. Now the label is what the client sees when they're looking at it. So I'm gonna make that nice. Name, colon, and space. Now you have a choice of wrapping the label tag around the name or attaching it using the for attribute or no label tag at all. We're gonna do this one right up here. We'll do it before, not after. Now most data fields want the name before. And if you're working with things like radio buttons and check marks, I usually put it after. Access key, think of it this way. If I put the letter G in here, now you'd have to let the client know this or they wouldn't know what they're doing. But if they open that, for example, in Explorer, and press Alt-G, it would automatically access this data field no matter where they were. That's what access key is. We won't use that. Tab index is when you tab. We've all done this. You tab through data fields. I mean, I tabbed from this one down to this one. That's the order of the tabbing. So if I make name number three, address number two, and zip number one, when I press tab, it's gonna go to zip first, then address, then name. If you leave it alone, it starts up here and goes on down here, and that's fine. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now there's our first field. Now if we click in it here, in character width, I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. I'm gonna go 40. Maximum characters, I wouldn't do that. It is a single line, no multi-line. It's not a password field. We can change how the content is presented. Right now it's just content. And that's fine, and that actually is a rule over here called content. Let me see if I can show you that right here, content. It's not disabled and it's not read-only. We'll leave this stuff alone. You can put in an initial value. I'll just do it on this one, like enter name here. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Let's click to the right of it. We could just make these things go down straight. Let's do it this way. Let's save a little space. I'm gonna to go to the right, click here, click the text field button again and this would be address. Again, that's the data field name. This is the label. We'll leave everything else alone here. Click OK, and there's address. Let's click in that field and make it bigger. Let's go ahead and do 40 again. Okay, now let's go down to the next line. Now go ahead and get to the right and press the Enter key. City, state, and zip, kind of US format, but that's fine. Let's go up to text field again. This is city, remember that's the data name. I'm gonna tab to the next field, make it look pretty, because that's what they're gonna see. Leave everything else alone, click okay. This one, let's not make it 40, but let's go ahead and make it like about 30. So character width here. Okay, click to the right. Text field, state. Tab down here, make it pretty. Colon space, leave everything else alone, click okay. Now state fields in the United States are two characters, like Kansas is KS and Florida is FL, California CA, you get it. I don't want a really long area here. 
So what I'm going to do is select that area, tell the computer the character width is 2, just 2, that's all you get, and the maximum they can type in is only 2. We'll leave everything the way it is. Let's go back over here, click to the right. Let's go ahead and do one more text field. This one is going to be zip code. And the label? I think zip code is two words, so I'll go ahead and take that chance, click OK. Zip codes in the United States are five numbers, and then you can add an additional four. To be honest with you, hardly anybody uses the extra four. So in zip code, six plus four plus a hyphen is 10. So the character width will be 10, and the maximum characters is 10. That's about it. Let's go ahead and save. Just like that. We can go ahead and close it. We've just added our text fields, but we're not done. So on to the next.